and welcome to today's back care session. This is all around strengthening and stabilizing pelvis. So often some of the issues that I see with people's lower backs come from actually a little, being a little bit unstable in the pelvis. Usually the instability comes because you've got some big muscles switched on and some of your stabilizing muscles not working at all. So we're gonna to work today to try and balance that a little bit. So we're gonna stretch and lengthen and open the big muscles and switch on some of the smaller ones. So um, join me on hands and knees and let's get going. So shoulders are pulling back. Let's take your um, spine nice and flat. If this is an issue for your wrists, you can always be up on your knuckles or you can overlap your mat. So you elevate your wrists a little bit. That just opens the angle ever so slightly. Just double check in here, look under, check that your feet and um, hands and knees are in line. Now just draw the shoulder back, lengthen the tail away. Eye line should be in front of your fingers on the floor to make sure you've got a nice long neck. So being really aware of your body positioning. Let's take an inhale and just relax the belly. So you wanna imagine your belly just falling, like it's heavy and you're allowing it to drop down towards the mat. And on your exhale, you're gonna imagine a sling coming under that belly and pulling it up into your spine. So it's a belly lift, which is pulling and sucking it up and then inhale, allowing it to drop. So you wanna think that the inhale is where it goes heavy. Exhale is where you wrap your body up into your spine, lifting like a hammock, like a sling, like you're wrapped in bandages, your corset is tightening. Inhale, release. Exhale, lift. Now try and make sure as you lift and lower here that you're not moving the spine as a consequence. Try and keep that spine really still. Inhale, release. Exhale, lift. Now sometimes with ladies I like to use the image of a pregnancy, like you're nine months pregnant, your belly is heavy, or you've got a bowling ball strapped to your abdomen. It's heavy, it's dropping, let it drop. But then you've got to use that weight to your advantage. Use gravity and pull the belly up. So you're pulling away from gravity. So this is a really safe way to initiate some abdominal connection, uh, which is working against gravity. But we want to just make sure that we don't drop into the shoulders or drop into the lower back or find any of these kind of um, habitual patterns. Just holding your four point position should feel challenging in your shoulders, in your tummy, in your wrists. All of this is strengthening work. Now we're gonna hold this flat back, draw the tummy up and in. And now when you're ready, we're just gonna take the bottom backwards. Imagine your sit bones like spokes, pressing back and then come forwards again. I want you to keep your spine really strong and still. And you're probably thinking, but I don't know. I don't know if my spine's straight. I can't tell without a mirror. But think of lifting that tummy into your spine, wrapping yourself into that tight corset and just do your best. Do your best at keeping and maintaining that spinal uh, position. Because actually body awareness is one of the most important things when it comes to back care. Knowing where you are in space. So figuring this out is, is a useful practice. And often using that tummy connection, using some imagery. So you can imagine there's a plank of wood on the back of your spine, along the back of the neck. And as you press back, you're leaning back, but you're keeping your body nice and still along that plank of wood. You're releasing the shoulders as you go back, so you're taking the weight out of the wrists, but you wanna keep that tummy pulling in and up. Let's take one more here, lean back and come forwards, pause there. And now holding your four point position, we're gonna just slide one leg back. Now I want you to imagine that you're on a surfboard. So as you slide your leg back, I want you to try and attempt to keep that surfboard really nice and still. Don't tip onto the supporting side. Both hips stay facing down, shoulders both pull back, and even weight through both hands. And then let's lift and lower that leg. Now remember that you're on your surfboard, so you want this lift and lower to be really, really gentle and really quiet. And so it won't disrupt your pelvic position, it won't disrupt your, um, your balance. Let's bring that leg back in. The other image you could go for is that plank of wood is back along your spine. This time it's got five or six cups of tea there. 
that you don't want to spill. So as you lift and lower the other leg for five and four, we're going to try and keep those cups of tea full. Three, careful that your pelvis doesn't tip, your spine doesn't sink and your shoulders are strong. Two and one, draw it in. Now let's swap other side. So back to that first leg. This side you have the option of adding in the opposite arm. Slide it forwards. Now both shoulders back. Tummy pulls up to the spine. And as we lift and lower, we want to stay really balanced. Can you do that from your belly? Could you pull your tummy tighter to your lower back? Could you really lengthen that spine? And let's go for two. Hold those cups of tea. Remember, no ripples on your surfboard. <laughs> you can have both if you want. Draw back in and let's take the other leg back. So that second leg, slide the arm forwards. We've got five lifts. We go up and control. And four. And three. Long spine. And two. And last one. And draw it in. And now take your knees nice and wide and sit your bottom back. So child's pose um, for a rest position here. You can reach the arms long if you want to stretch out your shoulders too, or you can just rest the arms. You could even rest your head on the hands. But your focus here is to really relax your belly. Let your belly hang to the space between your legs. Let your pelvic floor release. Can you feel like every inhale breath, you broaden the back of the pelvis? Breathe into that pelvis, find space. And then when you're ready, coming up, you're gonna come down onto your side. Now a really great way of stabilizing your pelvis and therefore your lower back is to strengthen the outer edges of the glutes, the baby muscles, the ones that um, kind of get eclipsed by glute max. You want your feet in line with your tail and a good bend at the knee. I see this a lot, this kind of, this is the bend. No, no, bring the heels in. Keep the tail and um, uh, spine nice and long. We want to draw that tummy away from the floor again. So imagine again that this is like a gravity ab workout. So we don't want to sink and collapse. We want to pull that belly in and really hold it there. You might then create a little bit of space underneath the waist. Don't worry if you don't, but we want those hips to be stacked. So your waist will be long on both sides. Open the chest and tuck the ribs in. It's the detail that's important. So really follow the setup. Get your setup right and your success will be guaranteed. Open up your chest, eye line forwards, keep the feet together and we open into clams. Now the most important thing here is that because we've got such a lot of focus on this trunk support, that as the leg opens, it won't go that far. It's not gonna take a big movement. If it did, it would have to take the pelvis with it, which means we're just putting more wear and tear through the lower back. So we wanna really stabilize that area. We're gonna use the core muscles to help us to do that but we're also starting to work into these glute med muscles, the small stabilizing muscles that are really good for hip support and knee support. And again, that support stops the wear and tear going into the lower back. You can have hand in front if you can keep your chest open or hand on hip if you need a little bit of feedback as to what's happening in your pelvis. Let's go for five and four and three and two. At the top, just hold little pulses. Let's go for 10, nine, little squeezes. Seven, can we squeeze more through the tummy? Five, four, chest open, eye line forwards. Two, one, and rest it down. Bring yourself up and spin yourself around. So over onto the other side, we're gonna take exactly the same setup and we're gonna take the same amount of time to find it. So feet in line with tail, look back. You can line yourself up against the back of the mat if it's useful. Spine long, eye line forwards. Most often I see this. So let's get those eyes forwards. You can rest your head on a cushion if you prefer. Hips are stacked, belly's pulling in, ribs are tucked so we're not flaring that um, spine. Ribs are drawing in and we're connecting all of this area through the trunk. Hand on hip or hand in front and we exhale to open. Now I like to factor in a breath cycle here because it, the exhale is the really efficient way of switching on the belly. So if you can think of exhaling and drawing the tummy in, rather than worrying about the leg, you'll always have a strong support structure here. So your lower back won't take that wear and tear. Exhale to pull up, inhale back. And we can focus on tummy as much as we focus on leg. 
And with the tummy, imagine that every exhale breath, you're drawing it away from the floor. Let's go for two and one. Hold it there, little pulses at the top. Squeeze, 10, nine, chest open, eight, shoulders broad, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release back down. Relax there. So much of your back care is in the rest of the body. So getting these shoulders forwards, uh, shoulders backwards, really helps because the moment the shoulders roll forwards, everything collapses. So um, making sure that your setup is good is important. Let's come onto your backs. It feels like sort of unnecessary detail sometimes, but the setup is the key. Let's take the tail to the floor. And I'd like you to find a neutral position. So you're resting on your tail, your pubic bone and your hip bones are on a level plane. You're gonna allow your shoulders to open. Let the chest relax. Let those arms come to your sides. If you don't like them being tucked in like this, if that pulls your shoulders forwards, then just turn them up, turn them to face upwards and let, the, um, let them go a little bit wider. Collarbones broad, tail down, ribs tucked. Let's take a couple of breaths and find the belly. So strong exhale will bring you into that corset again. Remember we did it on hands and knees. Feel like you draw that belly in, you tighten that belt. And then when you're ready with feet hip distance and parallel, you're gonna exhale and lift the hips, press the floor away, straight up and straight down. Now you might not wanna go all the way to the top, you might just want to take this three quarters of the way because the aim for this is to hold that stable spine, is to not let the lower back sink, not let the ribs push out and arch. We want to think that we are again resting now on that plank of wood. So as we lift, we lift as a unit. We're strapped into a tight corset. So the only bend or, or fold here that can happen is at the hip. So we're straight up, and straight down. Check in on your knees, make sure they're not rolling out too wide. If it's comfortable, you could always put a cushion between your knees. If you have a habit of letting them drop, then pop the cushion there and hold on to that because that's going to keep your alignment really good. Tight tummy, exhale, lift, inhale, lower. We're going to take this for four and three and two and one, now take the hips down, hold. You're gonna lift one leg up to tabletop and place it back down again. Remember, you're still in your corset. So we wanna exhale, draw the tummy in as we float the legs up, one at a time. Going from leg to leg, keeping the tummy pulling in. Now, sometimes I find hands on hips or fingertips on belly is really useful here because it's gonna give you that awareness of what's happening in the tummy. And what we want to happen is for the abdominal wall to draw down as we lift the leg up. We want to feel like we're pulling the muscles into the center so that we've got maximum support for this leg, so that we're not just working the hip flexor here, that we're working the center. It's an exhale fold, inhale down. And then maybe let's try lifting a leg, keeping that tummy switched on and reaching it long. You don't have to get it completely straight, but take it further away from you, draw it back in and lower it down. Let's do just a couple like this. Up, reach away. Now, can you feel under your fingertips that you're still trying to pull the tummy in? You might get to a point with that straight leg that it, it feels like it pops. And that's just your body sign and it's a really good thing to look for because it's telling you that that's too much, that they, you no longer have core control. And if you don't have core control, you're probably using your back. <laughs> Let's take one more. Let's reach away. Draw it back, and release it down. Now a couple of stretches for lower backs. Your hamstrings are really important. They get tight. We're going to find the neutral, so make sure you're still on your tail. Bring one leg in, take your hands behind your thigh and extend that leg up. Doesn't matter if it doesn't go straight, but if it doesn't go straight, it's quite a good sign that it's tight. So we want to try and make sure that we get some length down the backs of these legs because the hamstrings insert at the base of the pelvis. So if they're tight, then they're always pulling the pelvis down. So that will have a big impact on the, um, the positioning of the lower back and the wear and tear and the, and the load that goes through the lower back. Let's do one more here. Hold it up and then we're just going to flex and point. Now, if the leg isn't straight, it doesn't matter. Keep those shoulders relaxed. Try and hold the neutral position three and two 
and one. Now take that leg across, ankle to opposite knee. Allow the knee to drop out. This might be enough for you to feel a stretch in the back of the pelvis. If it's not, just draw the leg in. You can place that foot against the wall if you prefer. Um, if you prefer, rather than holding on, just try and get the shoulders down and the tail to the floor. Take a breath here. You can hold this for a little bit longer if you need to or want to. Take the leg down, let's swap sides. So other leg, make sure that tail stays down because as soon as you lift that leg up, you're likely to sink into your lower back. So try and hold the neutral. Again, it's just holding that neutral position, let's extend and bend, is powerful for the core. So you're really thinking about your core muscles to hold that pelvis still because you have to use them to keep the belly, um, to keep the pelvis stable and the spine long. Otherwise, if you relax into the tummy, the stretch of this leg will pull you into the ground. So particularly if you're tight. So on your next one, let's take the leg up, hold it there, and we're just gonna flex and point. Five, keep the leg as straight as you can. Four, three, you might feel this down the back of the calf or even the back of the knee. Two, and one, take that leg over, push the knee away, and draw the leg in. Again, you could be against um, your partner's thigh with that foot or against a brick wall. Ask one of your children to stand there so that you can just put your foot against something. Get your tail down, relax your shoulders. Open that knee nice and wide and relax back down. And you are all done. So repeating a workout like that where you're not putting too much movement through the spine, but you're just really focused on everything you do being about stability and control and support, um, will really help to balance out the muscles around that area. The muscles that could be pulling and could be tight and could be shifting your body into positions that are causing you pain or discomfort. So I hope it was useful. Let me know in the comments um, or let me know by message and I will see you again soon. Thanks.